I'm going to help you out. Here's one of them. And you really have to be asleep not to get this one. How many more are there? You better only be getting one more. Everybody? One more. You only one more choice for your diameter. That's diameter five. This one's diameter three. This one's diameter four. Now I got a dingle. Where am I going to put it? Doesn't matter. They're all the same. Oh, by the way, as long as I have the work there, that's that's five. Let's do four. How hard is that? Any more? Three. Any more? Two. Just to complete the cycle, let's do one. All right. Um, if I gave you ten minutes, could you do seven? If I gave you half an hour, could you do eight? If I gave you a week, could you do a hundred? Maybe not. Might, it might be it might become kind of tricky to make sure that you have them all down and that you you haven't duplicated anything. Okay, now there's a different kind of tree, and that's the notion of a label tree. Now uh, we're going to put labels on the vertices. Here we're talking about unlabeled trees. Well. Since there are infinitely many symbols, infinitely many labels, well, there are infinitely many label trees. So that doesn't make any sense. Let's label them with the integers from 1 to n, where n is the number of vertices. So we'll start with a, this example because it's big enough to be illustrative. So look at the one tree on three vertices. If you're going to put the labels on there of 1, 2, and 3, how many different ways can that be done? Remember, the drawing is not important. What's important is who is adjacent to whom. So how many different ways on that one tree to put the labels 1, 2, 3? Somebody said six. It's good thinking, but it's not quite right. Three. Why, I, what's your reasoning? One number, then. Because you have three options for your first number, and after that, the spacing of the other two shouldn't matter. <coughs> Take one in the middle. Uh, that's the that's the that's the sentence I was looking for. I <coughs> said, take the one in the middle. Then the other two are the leaves, and which one is on the right and which one is on the left doesn't matter because it's not the drawing that matters. It's who is adjacent to whom. So there's only three. 
So let me write big three for this one. Uh, how many ways for this one, by the way? Now, just one and two. Does it matter whether you take one, two, or doesn't matter? So for this one, just one. And for this one, just one. All right. Let's do, let's do this one. How many ways to put the labels on one, two, three, four on these trees? Well, we have to count for one tree, count for the other tree, and add them up. So let's do this one. How many ways to put the labels one, two, three, four on this one? Four, and it's the same reasoning, isn't it? What you're really doing is choosing which of the four becomes the center, and then the other three are the leaves. And it doesn't matter how they're jumbled up. See, that's my joke for the day, is that you, know, you, 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 you don't get it. It's okay. It's, it's the best I can do. It's early Tuesday morning. Okay, so this one contributes four, now, how many does that contribute? Good. How did you get that? That's fine. That's fine. And that's and twelve is right. All right. And so grand total. 16. Now, if you were back in high school and taking the SAT exam, you might possibly be asked, if you're given a sequence, 1, 1, 3, 16, what's the next term? Well, let's pause and calculate it ourselves. Let's do 5 for this one. So we're going to put the labels 1 through 5 on this picture. How many ways can it be done? Everybody should know the answer to this one, right? How many ways to put the labels 1 through 5 on, th on this star? 5, because what you're really doing is choosing the one that goes in the middle. What about this one? Sorry, this one. Here, uh, I think it's a little bigger than that. I think it's a little bigger than that. It's not a thousand. Sixty. How do you, how do you reason sixty? Very good. And then you have three ways. Absolutely. So you re you reason five choices for that one, four choices for that one, three choices for that one, then the other two don't matter. So that's 60. So it's that product, which is 60. What about this one? I want you to say 60, but I'm going to teach you a different way. It's, we're not going to quite use this ad hoc reasoning. What I want you to see is that this 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 2. And that 2 comes from the fact that you could turn the whole thing around. Now go back to the star. Rather than write 5, what I want you to see is that this is 5 factorial over 4 factorial. The 5 factorial is just the ways to put all the labels down. But once you've done so, you can permute the 4 leaves. So that gives you 5. Uh, similarly, you can make 
formulas like this for the others. However, let's complete this calculation. This one's 60, this one's 60, and this one is 5. So the total is 125. Now do you see the general pattern? Because 125 is 5 cubed. 16 is 4 squared. 3 is 3 to the 1. 1 is 2 to the 0. And actually, this is 1 to the minus 1. So, what is the formula? n to the n minus 2. Now, that's not a proof. That's simply an illustration. And so, I invite you to show that that formula is valid for n equals 6 by taking the pictures for the unlabeled trees on six vertices, taking all the different ways to attach the labels 1 through 6, and showing that the total will be 6 to the fourth power, which is 1,296. It will keep you busy for 10 minutes. It won't, it's not a half hour's worth of work. 10 minutes worth of work. Okay, is that assignment clear?